Hello and welcome to how to start your own custom picture framing business. I'm Paul Cassio. For many people, owning a business is a lifelong dream. If it's your dream too, you're not alone. There are currently more than 12 million self-employed people in the United States and that number is growing daily. For thousands of entrepreneurs, custom picture framing has provided an affordable and enjoyable path to fulfilling their dream with a business offering flexibility, variety, creativity, and prestige, as well as the potential for financial reward and career independence. If you're unhappy in a career that you find stressful or boring, chances are you'll find that custom framing is at the opposite end of the spectrum in each of these categories. It's a business where customers are almost always happy and deadlines are realistic. After all, there are very few emergency picture frames. It's a business where your talent, creativity, and professional opinions are valuable assets that are utilized and appreciated. In 1987, I started a picture framing business in the basement of my home. Since that time, I've opened three retail stores. And through my experience, I've found there are a lot of things to like about owning a custom picture framing business. I'd like to share some of the things I think you'll like too. First of all, custom framing is unique because it offers the potential for fun as well as profit. Few businesses are as enjoyable as custom framing and with markups of as much as 500%, the profit picture can look good too. It's also one of the most flexible businesses you can find. For example, you can start your framing business part-time working from home as I did or you can opt for the increased traffic and sales potential of a retail store or gallery. There are even framers who put their business on wheels and bring their frame shop to their customers. There are many other market opportunities too, which you'll learn about later in this video. Already own a business? If you do, custom framing can be a great add-on service that increases customer store traffic, generates profit, and introduces framing's upscale clientele to your existing products and services. Requiring only minimal space, photography studios, photo labs, floral craft and gift shops, paint stores, sign makers, and hardware stores are among the many businesses that make a great host for a custom framing service. Of course, the reverse is also possible. If you start with a framing business, it can become the incubator for new products and services, such as the ones I just mentioned. Now once you've got your first store running smoothly, you could also choose to expand by adding satellite stores. Think of satellite stores as mini frame shops. Satellites are relatively cheap to open and operate because they need only minimal staff, equipment, and inventory. That's because a portion of their framing will be done at your flagship store. This provides loss control. It also means that satellite stores require less space which of course means you'll have less rent to pay. The satellite store concept has been employed for years by the dry cleaning industry where one plant services numerous drop-off and pickup locations. When done well, it can be a great way to grow your business quickly and affordably. Many frame shops are owned and operated by partners with one person handling sales and design, the other production. This makes it a business that's well suited for couples and friends. One of the keys to a successful partnership is to have clearly defined areas of responsibility and authority before you begin. This can help you avoid squabbles later on. Another thing I like about owning a custom framing business is the comfort of knowing that I'm in an industry that's dominated not by large corporations, but by independent small business owners just like me. It may surprise you to know that the majority of all custom frame shops are neither franchises nor chain stores, but are independently owned and operated. This makes custom picture framing one of the few industries dominated by small business. And you know what? It's likely to stay that way too, for a reason that's easy to understand. You see, a frame shop's reputation is built on the strength and talent of individuals whose ingenuity, design skills, creativity, and craftsmanship become its trademark signature. 
This makes it all but impossible for the cookie cutter culture of chain stores to match the level of service, craftsmanship, and professional advice that you'll be able to offer. Now, you may be wondering what type of skills or prerequisite experience is needed to operate a framing business. You may have questions such as, do I need woodworking experience? How about an art background? Naturally, experience in these areas can be a plus, but it's in no way a necessity. For example, picture framing requires only the most basic of carpentry skills, and these can be easily learned. As for an art background, it can be helpful, but remember this, framers don't create the art, they enhance it. A good eye for what looks good and an ability to relate to your customers is far more important. Here are some questions you can ask yourself that will help you determine if you possess key skills and personal qualities that are important in picture framing. Are you a people person? Do you tend to enjoy hobbies that involve creativity such as art, photography, cooking, woodworking, or crafts? Are you willing to work hard to achieve success? Would others describe you as detail-oriented? Do you enjoy creating things with your hands? Are you considered to have a knack for decorating? Do you find that people frequently ask your opinion on matters of decorating or fashion? Yes, answers to these questions are a positive indicator that you have interests and related abilities that can help you in custom picture framing. Of course, in addition to your natural talent, you'll also need to learn the skills and techniques of professional framing, and you'll need to practice in order to polish those skills and develop speed and confidence. When I started framing, although I had a fair amount of business experience, Picture framing itself was completely new to me. I was neither an artist nor a carpenter. In fact, at that time, I was working for a software company, writing computer manuals for a living, a career that's about as far from picture framing as you can imagine. And although I had no experience, I did have a willingness to learn, a desire to own my own business, and a passion to succeed. Of course, in looking back, I realized I did a lot of things the hard way, and I made a few mistakes along the way. Well, actually, I made a lot of mistakes. Some were minor, such as breaking glass. Others proved quite costly, like buying the wrong equipment and ordering materials that I would never be able to sell. Unfortunately, when I started out, there were no structured self-study programs and no framing schools, only the school of hard knocks. One of the things I quickly learned was that making frames is a whole lot easier than making money. That's why you'll also want to learn the business of framing, which includes frame design and color selection, sales techniques, pricing, advertising, public relations, and more. The foundation for your success will be formed by your desire to succeed, combined with careful planning and the acquisition of knowledge. But what I feel is just as important and can give you a competitive edge is to apply your life experience. That is, to be able to take some of the unique things that you've learned and accomplished in previous occupations and in life itself and to translate what you've learned and apply it to the picture framing business. I firmly believe that this is one of the keys to success for all entrepreneurs. That's why I encourage my students at the APFA to learn what you don't know, and utilize what you know. This will help ensure your success and assist you in mastering the new challenges you'll face.